You also see in Ephesians 4 how Christ is the new Adam and he restores the image and likeness of God to all humanity. Remember how God created us in Genesis 1. He made us in his image and likeness. In the image and likeness of God he made them, male and female he made them. So men and women alike are made in the image and likeness of God. And so we, what Christ does is restore that in us. Take a look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4, where Christ, uh, in verse 13, where Christ bestows gifts on Christians, various gifts of the Holy Spirit, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, this is something very important because, as a matter of fact, we even have some people in the church who are kind of silly. They say, well, everybody should have their own opinions. That's not the goal. Christ wants us to have unity of the faith and unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not everybody coming up with their own deal. That's not in my Bible. I don't know what Bible that is, not mine. And rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head. We grow up into Christ. He's the model. And we are to become in the image and likeness of God. He continues in chapter 4, verse 17, about how he's the norm for mature human living. In 417 of Ephesians, it says, Now this I affirm and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are not thinking well. And it's not just Gentiles of the time of St. Paul. It's a lot of people foolishly away from faith. They are darkened in their understanding. One of the reasons they sin is because they don't have any sense of the dignity Christ brings to human beings by saving us. The inherent dignity. And that they um, are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. It's not just that they don't have a chance to know. These are folks, this is a different group, these are people who don't know because their heart is hard. They become callous. And in their callousness, usually accompanied with a lot of cynicism, they give themselves up to licentiousness and the greedy practice of every kind of uncleanness. This is, they're mean and they promote sin and they don't care about anything. St. Paul reminds all of us Christians, you did not so learn Christ. That is not what you learned about Christ, assuming that you heard of him or taught as the truth is in Jesus. So he says in verse 22 of Ephesians 4, put off your old nature, which belongs to your former way of life and is corrupt through deceitful lust. Because lust tricks you. All kind, not just sexual lust, all kinds of lusts of different things. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new nature created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Put on the new nature that Christ won by his resurrection from the dead. It is a new nature created after the likeness of God. We lost that image and likeness of God. We distorted it. That's why the devil uh, goes after people to possess them. He wants to distort the image. That's why he gets people to think that certain kinds of killing of the sick and the feeble is mercy killing. They distort mercy. That's why they, you know, the, I just saw it today. Number one reason of death in this country is abortion. Number one killer. It's no longer car accidents. Abortion, not wait. Because people are willing to destroy the image of God in an innocent child who's done nothing. 
You see that distortion in what the Nazis did and the communists. That's all distortion. And what we want to do is say, no, Lord Jesus, give me the new nature. Recreate me in the likeness of God. And that means in true righteousness and holiness. Not in being so-so, not in being okay, but in being righteous and holy. And this is what we are called to have in our own lives.